the Supreme Champion Great Taste Award 2011 winner, the number one, it's a corned beef and no ordinary corned beef, fifth generation butcher, Moira County Down, Northern Ireland, George McCartney's made this absolutely brilliant, blew our judges away last year. We're now on the 45th and final day of tasting with the Royal Garden Hotel in Kensington and we're going to find out today who is the Supreme Champion Great Taste Award 2012 and I for one cannot wait. Nearly 9,000 entries from nigh on 2,500 companies have been submitted into the 2012 Great Taste Awards. They've been blind tasted over 44 judging days at five different centres, including a week in the Pillar Hall Olympia in London and 35 days at the Guild of Fine Foods Tasting Kitchens in Wincanton, Somerset. The palettes of 350 experts have been put to the test and they identified just 123 entries considered to have delivered that indefinable wow factor to be awarded three star gold. Now this is a culinary hotbed. There are something like 60 judges here. We've whittled it down to 123 three-star gold medal winners. They're all being tasted here. And out of this lot, in the afternoon, 15 or 16, will go forward to the final tasting panel to find out who is the Supreme Champion 2012. It doesn't get much more exciting than this. great seeing these new ingredients come through and people still working on quality you know not looking to mass produce things first of all it shows they're three star it shows and I've just tasted a magic pork jowl now that's an underused cut it was an absolutely fantastic competition and we're really thrilled to still be involved in sponsoring it it's the only one of its kind it's the only real serious uh, food competition for small-scale producers and quality foods this person who's made this loaf of bread that I've fallen in love with. I'd love to meet them. I think, you know, they communicate themselves through the products they have. And I think what's really important about the Great Taste Awards is it's an award that puts beer out there in a broader culinary environment. We all judge completely blind. We have no idea what the product is. If we think it deserves a one, a two or a three, it goes on to the next judging table. So it's, it's so fair. Bob manages to get so many experts in so many fields that we all learn something from each other too. There you see, that's, that's just a beautiful moment. Me and my bone. You're just jealous. You should have got your own bone. <laughs> There's nothing quite like great taste in the UK. Out of those 9,000 products, we've whittled them down to a final 15, and very conveniently, we've got 15 judges. Some great culinary talent on display. And we're going to lend all their larynx and all their different elements to this remarkable event today. And we're going to find out who the Supreme Champion is. Well, it's a stunning beer, and put it onto the nose, had some great fragrances coming through. I was getting citrus from it. Three, two, one, please vote now. It's fantastic, really moist, delicate flavours, um, distinct caraway notes coming through. The, the, the flats and the, I'm really talking bollocks now. I always yearn for more jelly and a bit more squelch. I was sad to swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a poor example of a not of an oversweet greasy thing. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you want to speak to someone else? <laughs> taste just amazing sort of fragrances it was um, stunning absolutely stunning uh, uh, my jowls are so happy right now I, I love the idea of it and I think it's delicious on your first taste if you open a pot of this and weren't told what it was it would really shock you and I think that is a good thing nice and delicate and I think it's in balance with the with the, the, the level of flavor you get from the fish 
I didn't give a shit. It was fantastic. It didn't go ka I know what this is, straight away. It was brilliant. You're wrong. Bloody lovely. <laughs> Real bit of heft to them. The Supreme Champion 2012, the name is in the envelope. It's been a marvellous journey, so many great tasting days. And thank you very much to our magnificent panel for our Supreme Champion. It's in here. We're going to find out who it is. It's September the 3rd. It's a Monday at the Royal Garden Hotel. I cannot wait. I'm en route to the Great Taste Awards dinner, but I've stopped off at the Cadogan Hotel, which is the home of the Great Taste Awards pop-up restaurant, featuring the Supreme Champion 2011, corned beef, marvellous that it is, and I'm delighted that I'm meeting the person who's created it. George McCartney, I feel as though I'm in the presence of greatness. What was it like to you that night when your corned beef was voted Supreme Champion? It was just speechless, completely wowed over with the whole atmosphere. It was a fantastic night. And to achieve such a, a prestigious award for the corned beef was just unbelievable. And Bob happened to say just before he announced the winner that it would change their lives for good. And little did I know it was going to change my life so much. I won my actual first competition in 1980. And we had won every major competition in the UK and Ireland uh, for sausage making. Publicity in these ones were brilliant. But they only go on for so long and then they die away. But the great taste has just steamrolled the whole way through the year. So George, what difference did it make to you and McCartney's as a business once you became voted the Supreme Champion Great Taste Awards? Well, we have outgrown our shop. We have to showcase our product better. We have so many new products coming along. And this is why we're building a nice new delicatessen, plus an added advantage of having a coffee shop to make the customers feel more at home when they're there. And that's down to the, getting the confidence from the Great Taste Awards to go ahead and do this. And uh, it's going to employ another approximately eight people. The people that are, we are drawing from a distance to come and buy our, our good products, it really does pay dividends uh, business-wise to enter because it gives you that lift. And when you get the, your star on your product, it helps sales. I was selling uh, approximately press a day, which was about six kilos in the shop. And that went to 120 kilos. We have 10 outlets on, on the mainland of the UK selling it for us. And we had to be very selective because we, as a handmade product, we can't go into bulk production as such. And there's only a few selective stores have it. This has been marvellous for us to get our name linked with such stores as Selfridges, Fortum and Masons. People like that who are actually selling our product give us a very, very big boost. And in fact, and, uh, Partridge is just down the road, if you'd like to come and see, they have it as well. And they're very well known, such a super store. It really is marvellous. And did the supermarkets suddenly show a bit of interest? Yes, quite, quite a lot of the, the big boys were uh, mad looking to get their hands on it, but uh, it's lovely to be able to say, no, we can't yeah. supply you. So, as you can see, I'm all ready for the awards. I'll tell you one thing, George. For all your amazing success, you seem remarkably unaffected by it all. Yes, I'm still the same boy from Northern Ireland, haven't changed a bit at all. Would you like a lift to the awards? Fantastic, thank you very much. Which would you prefer, the Invicta or the Bentley? Georgie boy. <laughs> now that is a beautiful car. Classy motor. Eight thousand eight hundred and seven entries became one hundred and twenty-three three-star gold award winners, which in turn became the fifteen stunning, stunning speciality food and drink products tasted by our supreme panel. Eleven of them picked up a Golden Fork Award here this evening. We had 
a lamb carpaccio from Wales, a hot smoked salmon from Scotland, some gizzard comfy from here in the southeast, a sourdough meat from the north of England, a ham on iberico de bolota from Spain, a northern Irish guanciale, a pale ale from the Midlands, a passion fruit curd from the West Country, a smoked rack of bacon from Ireland, and a very special cup of tea. But only one of them will be the Great Taste 2012 Supreme Champion. Bloody gorgeous. <laughs> Beautiful nose. The fat just melts in your mouth. Just such a delicious thing. Yeah, I died and gone to heaven eating that. Um, if I don't eat anything else ever again, I'd be quite happy to just keep eating that. Stunning, absolutely stunning. No, excellent. It's a fantastic product. I was sad to swallow it. The, 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 <laughs> the flavour just kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on. I thought it was beautifully balanced. I thought it was absolutely lovely. I thought the balance, I thought the texture was phenomenally delicious. Utterly delicious. I enjoyed it a lot. I couldn't resist. That was absolutely the most delicious thing. Wonderful texture, just crisp on the outside and still sort of melting, but with a bit of bite to it inside. Two large slices of white crusty bread and we're in sandwich territory. Never said at all. Thanks. I know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the food we're about to crown Great Taste Supreme Champion 2012 will change the life of the person who makes it forever. Simon, over to you. Name that food. Thank you very much, Bob. I, I'd rather feel I've destroyed the dramatic tension because I was so excited. I've actually opened the envelope already. Well, open it, read it. I, I've read it. And it gives me extreme pleasure uh, to announce that the Fortnum Mason Supreme Champion Award this year goes to Hannon Meats for the Moy Allen Drown Charlie. Hey! Peter Hannon, over you come. Jilly Dugan, Shirley Lord. Russell, Simon Dugan. They're all here. Well done. Congratulations, Peter. Here you come, fella. The supreme champion, staying in Northern Ireland. The Northern Irish have done it again. The Irish are coming, lots of them. <laughs>